Fully Cooly hit me at just the right time. When I first saw the show, I was probably about 13, dealing with all the cliché problems of being 13, feeling like an outsider, hating my life, and, as a bonus, dealing with some messy family situations. So, Fully Cooly, offbeat and weird as it was, gave me a nice little mental niche to sink into and enjoy. But something consistently got to me. What does Fooly Cooly mean? Those words, Fooly Cooly, the characters even toss that one around between themselves from time to time. They ask, and I wanted to know. I wanted to know what was going on behind the craziness and screwball reality that the show deliberately builds for the audience. What does it all mean? What is Fooly Cooly? A bit of a cult hit, Fooly Cooly is popular for a lot of the same reasons people might put it down. It's weird. It's disjointed. And if you're not paying attention, it seems to be more about nonsense than anything else. But if you give it some time and let it grow on you, Fooly Cooly is intriguing. There's something beneath the surface that always leads you back to that same question. What is Fooly Cooly? That question becomes a refrain, and it leaves the audience with more to chew on than giant robots and dirty jokes. As you watch Nauta and the people around him pulled into the weirdness as their world spirals out of control, there are glimpses of what meaning might be in this world, little tidbits that hold promise of a peek into the creator's minds. Let's take a look at some examples. First things first, the iconic scene of Fooly Cooly, Rickenbacker vs. Teen Face. The alien, Haruko, zips up out of nowhere and clobbers the protagonist, Nauta, upside the head with a bass guitar, whacks him really good, and then... Here I'm going to digress for a second and mention the manga. In Japan, Fooly Cooly was a straight-to-video thing, and a company called Kodansha serialized a manga story alongside the release. The art is credited to Hajime Ueda, while the story is still credited to Gainax, the studio behind the anime itself. The whole package is a pretty faithful adaptation, but there are some points either expounded upon, altered, left out entirely, or added in for the manga. Normally, I'd let this fall by the wayside or exist in its own separate canonical bubble. But given that the story is still credited to the original studio, I'm inclined to believe that this is still in Word of God territory and can offer some valuable insights while we pick everything apart. So, back to Nauta getting beat down. Haruko drops in on her scooter and lays Nauta out flat while he's fooling around with his brother's ex, Mamimi. In the show, the scene is a quick one-two punch that throws a few absurd jokes in and moves on, playing the scene for a weird laugh and letting the action roll on into the rest of Nauta's day. In the manga, Nauta dies. It's goofy here, too, of course. Mamimi drags his corpse off to a vending machine for a juice and a chat, while Haruko catches up to finish the job. But the point is that their relationship, particularly in the absence of Nauta's older brother, takes priority over immediately furthering the plot. It's an interesting scene that, regardless, really establishes where Nauta and the rest of the world are at. The world's boring. Their town, Mabase, is boring. Nauta is boring. He's frustrated and upset and confused, but he's boring, and it takes something really severe to shake that loose. In the anime, Nauta smashes a television with his brother's baseball bat in a fit of jealousy. The resulting electrical short fries what turns out to be a mechanical simulacra of his father, Kamon. He discovers his real father, mummified in a closet, and brings him back to life by dousing him in water. It's weird, it's offbeat, and it's goofy. In the manga, Nauta kills Kamon. Not a copy, he straight up kills his own dad with a baseball bat because he suspects there's something going on between Kamon and Haruko. In both storylines, this ends up with Nauta taken into custody by police. Though, in the anime, he's released by a character who knows about Haruko, while in the manga, he escapes after a robot wreaks havoc on the town. At the end of the final episode of Fooly Cooly, Haruko leaves Nauta behind. She offers to take him along on her intergalactic adventures before immediately rescinding the offer and simply leaving him behind, saying that he's still just a kid after all. Though she leaves behind her base, the same one she'd busted his head in with when they'd first met, and at the end of everything, the guitar sits in a messy corner of Nauta's bedroom. At the end of the manga, Haruko leaves her Vespa behind for Nauta. At the same time, her invitation is more open, encouraging Nauta to learn to ride the scooter so that he can follow after her someday. We leave the story as he works his fingers literally raw, trying to start the bike. So, what is it that ties these events together? None of these events are strictly necessary to tell the Fooly Cooly story. That is, beyond some superficial event A happens so event B follows storytelling machinery, the Fooly Cooly story can still happen without the layers of nuance built up behind the absurdity. And in my opinion, this is where you start to find meaning behind the Fooly Cooly nonsense. The answer to our driving question comes from in between the gaps of the story as it's presented to the audience. When we start to ask, why this way? Why this detail? Why this choice? Then we start to come close to understanding. Of course, I'm being philosophical here, and you're not going to be able to dig up some secret code that tells you exactly why the creators made this decision or that one, but you're going to think and you're going to find an answer that works for you. You're going to say, 
why do they subvert Naoto's dad's death in the anime, but embrace it in the manga? Or why did Haruko tell Naoto to follow her in the manga, but leave him behind in the anime? How does any of this tell us what Fulikuli means? How does examining the bits of story we might not even care about get us closer to deciphering the mystery of a couple syllables that provide the driving force behind a bizarre but entrancing cult TV show? Truth be told, they don't. And sorry, but they probably never will. We'll be stuck debating the real meaning behind the letters FLCL until we all get sick of everything anime, pack it all up, and start wearing suits or something. And I happen to think that's quite fitting. A story that, even in completion, only gives you just enough to follow along, leaves you wanting more but never quite able to find it. It taunts you, the whole time asking with a smile, fooly cooly, what's that? And then it wraps up, with a nominal ending but no real closure. And what could be better? Well everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on Tunoscopy. Ha, <laughs> you thought I was going to wrap up without mentioning the new stuff, didn't you? <laughs> nice. Anyway, yes, the elephant in the room when you're dissecting Bottle of Lightning is the sequel that crops up more than 10 years down the line. And seeing as we've got little more than a synopsis to go on at this point, I'll try to keep this brief. Yes, we're getting more fully cooly. Yes, the new stuff has the same director on board. And yes, we might actually get an answer to what fully cooly means. But does that really matter? I don't think so. I think, this far out from the original, they'll be separate entities. They may address the same universe, the same characters, and even similar themes, but I believe that they'll be separate parts of a whole, like a multiple choice question with two right answers. Each one will have its own points to make and its own nuances to explore. But the fact that either exists shouldn't detract from the other, rather that's where our job as the audience really begins. Fully Cooley's creators did the hard work in making it happen, we have to do our own and figure out what it all means. Anyway, we'll have to save all that for another video. But before I go, for real this time, I want to know what you think. What do you think Fooly Cooly means? What do you think the story is all about below the surface? And how do you think the new seasons will play into all of that? Sound off below, and I'll see you all next time on Tunoscopy. FLCL means Fooly Cooly only when we're not being told it stands for Fury Curry, Flip Clock foolish cleverness, flimsy claim, or simply a Japanese sound for frauderism.